In this video, we'll be talking about an artist that at one point in time, many expected to be the next Frank Ocean or Childish Gambino. This was due to their projected growth and similar experimental style that blended the hip hop genre with a heavy influence of soul and folk music. As a teenager, this artist was on fire. He was a part of the 2015 Double XL Freshman Class, the FIFA 16 soundtrack, and soundtracks of multiple box office films. He worked alongside A-list artists like Gucci Mane, Chance the Rapper, Jaden Smith, Joey Badass, and Ty Dolla Sign. Even with all these accomplishments, the artist was still stuck in the space of being an undiscovered gem by the majority of listeners. Rory was an artist that I thought was going to be super big in the music scene, and so did a lot of others like Kid Cudi, Andre 3000, and Kanye West who originally asked Rory to join his Donda team back in 2014. So it's hard to believe that if you aren't going out of your way to search for him in 2024, then you're probably not hearing any of his music. So let's talk about his journey in the industry and how Rory would continue to remain somewhat of an underground artist despite making such blissful music and having an impressive early career. His rise felt more powerful than many other young artists. Instead of feeling like the usual buzz on one hot song, it felt like a movement was being sparked. Rory started to get noticed in 2014 for launching and executing his anti-tour. This plan was basically an attempt at guerrilla warfare to force himself in front of new audiences to give them live exposure to his music. The idea behind Rory's anti-tour was simple. He would set up camp outside of someone else's show and put on a pop-up performance with the hope of stealing some of the artist's fans. This wasn't a malicious act in any way because Rory was choosing to do these performances at the shows of artists that he respected and felt like he could also connect with their fan bases. Some of the anti-tours that he put on were at shows of artists like Future, Childish Gambino, and The Neighborhood. People would often record and upload these live performances, which in return would bring even more attention to the artist and his music because people were impressed by this unorthodox approach to promote his music. During a show in Atlanta where Childish Gambino was performing, Rory waited on a bridge above the venue with a microphone and speaker. After the show, he performed while fans were leaving the event. This unique and in-your-face presentation captured the attention of many, but it was ultimately just as unique as his sound that would end up converting the listeners into fans of his music. In March of 2014, his hottest song was God's Whisper. This song would take off, and the music video currently has over 6.2 million views on YouTube. Now, even the record labels and other established artists in the industry were starting to come across the 18-year-old artist, and they saw something else when they looked at Rory. Dollar signs. All of a sudden, some of his favorite artists were reaching out to weigh in on his situation and to give advice on which direction the young artist should take his music career in. This had Kanye flying Rory and his team to LA to explain why they should team up. But Rory would surprisingly turn down the offer, with the reason being that he had too much respect for what Ye's done and the work that he's put in, telling him that he inspired what they do. But from a creative standpoint, they were trying to build something separate. Aside from other artists showing interest in him, Rory also had record labels lined up that wanted to sign him. He decided to sign with Columbia Records because they made promises of giving the artist and his team control over the creative direction of his career and music while still being there to support them financially and with their large influence in the industry. It sounded like the perfect deal to the teenager. Rory also decided to team up with a startup management company called Love Renaissance. Rory was their first artist, but they would later add others like Drom and Black to their roster. Then, in August of 2014, Rory released his first mixtape, titled Indigo Child. I shared my cigarette room fire. Yeah. I felt her every Wednesday. This mixtape brought the artist even more attention and new fans. That was a time when many hip hop listeners were leaning into social media and sites that focused specifically on mixtapes to find new artists. It was right before SoundCloud really took over as the main way for consumers to find rising talent. This was perfect for Rory because the mixtape was well received by this crowd and presented a fresh new sound. The following year, in 2015, Rory was on the Double XL freshman list. I'm back in crusading, industry is whacking, deflated, cracking, we caving, trying to get our ass on the station. But fuck the fans and all the favorites, I'm smacking your ratings. I give a fuck like George Bush did for African babies. Making the list felt like the final stamp that he could have asked for at that time to be solidified in the industry. 
and later in the year, Rory released his first studio album, titled All We Need. The album received some pretty good reviews from critics, but most agreed that the project felt a little bit scattered, with moments of feeling less like an album and more like bits of preaching without a clear message. Regardless, myself and many others were a fan of the album. Also, during that year, Rory would get involved with some pretty interesting projects, like contributing vocals for the soundtracks of a few movies, including The Hunger Games, American Honey, Lucy, and Collide. He also got one of his songs in the popular video game FIFA, and worked alongside a list of cool artists. But after 2015, he stopped releasing music for three years, which seemed weird since his music was continuing to gain traction. After a few years of going quiet, when he returned in 2018, he announced that he was ending his contract with Columbia Records and his management company, Love Renaissance. In an interview, Rory shared that he went to Coachella to perform without receiving any support from the label. He felt like they were trying to put him in a position of fear and weakness so that he would run out of money so that they could have control over him. In regards to cutting ties with Love Renaissance, he tweeted about his experience and feeling like the company was choosing to focus all their attention on supporting Drom and Black. In another tweet, Rory said, Industry play too many games. Gonna just wing it, follow my heart, and do it my way. And it seems like that's exactly what the artist has been doing since. Right after the split, he released a ton of music, flooding his SoundCloud with 22 new songs. My baby ain't no part-time lover cause she's too divine and she's super fine and I know she's mine. After Rory split from the label, it seems like he really did follow his heart. He's since continued to release music that doesn't really fit into any mold of the music industry. Now more than ever, he's been leaning into the folk and psychedelic rock sound while releasing music pretty consistently. The closest artist that I could compare his sound to would probably be Tizo Touchdown or Lil Yachty's most recent rock album. Even though it makes me a little sad to know that Rory isn't receiving the attention that I think his music deserves, it seems like he's at peace with his decision to step away from the industry and to just focus on making the kind of music he wants to. It's not uncommon to see something like this happen due to fallout with labels. They often put their resources into a few artists that they think will be the biggest stars. And it's unfortunate that Rory was an artist that had his resources and attention from the label taken away and reinvested into others. I think they fumbled and lost a great artist. In a recent interview, Rory shared that at this point, he's just making music for himself and not trying to change it for critics or a mainstream audience. He also runs a non-profit record company called Into the Woods. He released his latest projects, The Woods and Strawberry Moon, under this label. Being successful in the mainstream music industry is extremely hard, even for talented artists. Typically, you need to have at least two out of three things, skill, luck, or a gimmick. Throughout Rory's career, it's been very apparent that one of those things has been present, skill. What are your thoughts on Rory? Do you remember this artist? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more music related content. You might think that you're already subscribed to this video if it was on your homepage, but I encourage you to double check. I appreciate all the support. Don't forget to take your vitamins, say your prayers, and have a great day.